Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for tuning in to another Oh So Bossly, a.k.a. Call Me Bossly segment. Today, as promised, man, here comes the Click Click segment. Well, Click Click is what they call the picture-taking program when you're incarcerated in New York State Penitentiary. And um, one thing about life is, as fast as time flies... The blessing in the universe is a picture can capture a moment that could bring you back to that moment at any given time, every time when you reflect on that picture. Brings you, you know, like memories. And um, one thing dudes do in prison a lot is exchange pictures. Like, that's how you familiarize yourself with individuals. That's how, like, you show your camaraderie. You take pictures with your niggas for memorabilia purposes, like, so, um, we're going to have a lot of good moments on this one, man. Like, this one, I ain't rush it because, like, I want this one to be genuine. I want to look through every picture and just walk through the vibe, the day. You feel me? The niggas in the picture, the history, like, and just let it come natural. So, here we go. Let's bop. When you on your journey up north, you meet a lot of characters. You meet a lot of individuals who claim they gangsters, who claim they perform. You meet a lot of niggas who really did perform, but that doesn't mean in essence of character, there's still individuals you should uh, associate yourself with. And um, the two men I'm standing next to in this picture, I'd be honored to stand next to any day in America. These are two men that lost their life to the prison system and these are two men that known if they would have ever got a second chance at the free world, they'd have probably never went back to prison. You know what I'm saying? Right here is my man Two Gun Jess and my man Wayno. EGB Valentine, you know the shit. Um, I ain't gonna lie, I go back with them niggas, man. I'm not even gonna front, I go back a little further with my man Two Guns. I met two guns in Comstock through, my, through the homie G-Rad. Me and the homie G-Rad was double bunk in C-Block. G-Rad from Rochester and, uh, you know, two gun just from the town, two gun just. That's a double law and all that. That's the nigga who taught me how to hold a knife correctly. You know what I'm saying? I'll never forget him. He taught me the game, man. He showed me how to really get money in prison. Uh, that's my boy, that's my best man when I got married in prison and everything. Um, he got locked up for, a, I think it was a double homicide, but there was a knife used him and they gave him natural life. The funny shit about it is when he was in Auburn, the nigga that he killed, the nigga, he, the two people that he killed was a nigga and his bitch. And the funny shit is, their, their child that was in the house that day pulled up years later and almost got his ass smoked. I mean, luckily for him, the pee-pee man came around. Whether that was by choice or by fix, he got away from the shit. You know how this shit work. And the other man next to me, man, that was definitely an honor in itself. We ain't no Valentine. Only, only motherfucking way no I ever met in person. It's the only one I know. Um, well, that was my boy, man. We was in D Block and Auburn together. That was my neighbor. He taught me a lot. Wise man. One thing he told me, he was the nigga that broke down the illusion of blood to me. And like, when I say the illusion of blood, those who know know. Those who don't, won't. But that's not something I tend to have um, a discussion about on this internet. But that was my boy, man. Uh, I remember he'd been in jail for a long time. He actually caught a jail body and extended his sentence. Had a body, went to jail, and then caught another body in jail. Like, it just that's just how it goes, man. When you out here and you playing, shit go left. But he's another individual that if he ever got a chance to the street again, he would never go back to prison. 
but he taught me a lot. He taught me like understanding the psychological level about the niggas you around when it comes to this gang banging shit. That's what I oh I will always attribute to Wayno. It was up to Wayno and Robo and Auburn to let me run the UBN. And they decided to let me do it and taught me a lot while letting me do my thing. Well, I'm always going to respect and salute them for that. See, a lot of niggas talk that shit, right? But Auburn is my claim to fame facility. Everybody has one of them jabs. And the funny thing about that is Auburn, Auburn is one of the most dangerous maxes. Because that's where you can't hide. There's no hiding. It don't matter what block you in. You got to come see me. <laughs> you feel me? And um, anybody who was with me in Auburn is going to tell you. I had that C block shit looking like I rap. Salute to the niggas that know. Salute to the niggas that have been there and made it back, man. Well, rest in peace to my niggas that ain't make it home yet. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this man right here is my personal OG, Robert Lockley, Robo Just. Rest in peace to Big Bro, man. First and foremost, we're going to start his with a moment of silence respectfully. Yo, thank you for respecting that moment of silence. That, that, this nigga in this picture right here is the reason why I talk about my knuckle check so much. He's the reason why I be telling you niggas pop out what you want to do. He took me from a nigga that was only fighting in the streets, put me in front of a little boxing bag, and showed me how to do things a little bit more correctly. Just tighten my shit up, man. And, um... I'm always going to pay homage to Robo because Robo taught me and gave me the opportunity to lead. And upon his decision, is why the niggas with me, when, when, when were with me under my direction, were winning. Like, there's not a nigga that was ever around me when I had the hood that owed a soul charge. If you did, we was getting to it. How much is it? All right. You got to be able to go to commissary, homie. If your restitution or crime victim fee was too much, uh, you gonna hit the kitty or you gonna do something. You gonna run the, you know what I'm saying? You gonna do something, nigga. Cause like I had too much going on. I always had something for niggas to do. I had my hand in everything. You feel me? Like those that know, know, nigga. I had my hand in everything. The poker games, I put bricks in the poker games for the gamblers, nigga. The pool, niggas, I put money behind the niggas that's making the tickets in the pool so I get my cup and shit get popping, you know? Like I said, man, the drug trade was my number one thing. Like, it was a president day, nigga. Drugs run prison. Niggas will say what they want. But a nigga drug habit will keep him in line and make him put his gun in his pocket. Because <laughs> he want to get high, knowing that if he shot you, he can't get high. You ain't going to be there. So this is when you keep a nigga on his best behavior, too. So it's funny, man. Like I said, the Auburn was definitely a different facility. Made a lot of money there. Put in a lot of pain there. Met a lot of real niggas there. And, um, salute to that shit. Now, in this next picture right here, it's a funny one. My man Jux. It's my man Jux to me, to my left. And my man Jig to the right. Jux, I met Jux on Rikers Island first. We started our bed on the island, like, Young, up and coming, you feel me? When my son was calm, we had militant heart before they put the boot to that shit. And um, my son came up, came a long way. We landed in Comstock, came up north together. At 10, he had 15, so like we really did our bid together for the most part in the beginning. And then, you know, different box trips, we went different ways. I don't know what happened to him right now, so if you're out there, yo, Jux, hit me, nigga. You already know this shit. 
Word, but my son Jux was definitely a shooter. Um, I'm gonna leave that light there. Like, my son was definitely a shooter. Yo, my son Jig, though, he played, who's to my right, the one that's taller than me. He was another one who played as, like, a, a definitely, like, a, a mentor to me on my rise to the top. And I say that because Jig kept me on my toes, like, always let me know, like, you know what I'm saying? He let me know who was who, regardless who was who. And he was one of the first people I ever seen run a legit business with an LLC from prison. He had a tape catalog that was legit. And all of us would be ordering our tapes from him. He'd have uh, his moms and his son dubbing the tapes, the music, keeping his son flying shit. Like, my son was definitely a leader, definitely a leader, definitely a thinker, man, for everybody, not just himself. His situation just went a little left for those that know, know. Because, you know, this shit is a grimy-ass game when it comes to power. When it comes to that top spot. <laughs> Niggas are kill for them top spot views. But me and my son, Jig, we definitely uh, had a different bond than a lot of other niggas. We was closer than a lot of other niggas. And this picture right here is my, my drop, with my man D Money. You know what I'm saying? Like my son out here, you know the shit, he just came home. This is when it was me, Ghost, and the Hunter Boys, you know, you know what I'm saying? Say too much. I'm going to name niggas that, you know what I'm saying? Know what I'm doing in my lane. All right, stop. I got to take my time with this picture. The man that you see to the far left, tall one, that's my boy Trax Murder. We need another moment of silence for a real nigga that came home with a prosperous-ass future, but unfortunately had some unfinished business from his past that cost him his life. So let's give him another moment of silence real quick. Yeah, I'm good looking for respecting that. Yo, Tracks Murder, though, was before his time, like, with this music shit. When I tell you the shit that we hearing on the radio, as far as, like, and Young Money came out and then all that other shit. Like how they was had that bop. That nigga was that nigga had a a sound musically and he played the piano. Like he had a keyboard. When that nigga used to be in his cell working on music, it didn't matter who was who, gangster, not. Everybody shut the fuck up and listened because that nigga just controlled the crowd. Like his music was fire, you homie. Know I mean? Like he used to read all the all the motherfucking new magazines, all the Hip Hop Weekly staying in tune, like, so he was in tune, like, the nigga was really on top of his game, like, I don't really know how to describe it better than that. When it came to that Battle Yard rap shit, like, everybody claimed they had the title, but that's one nigga I seen shut it down every time. Niggas coming out there beating on his chest, the homie coming outside with a pass from security with a piano, flexing on niggas, like, <laughs> I mean, like, pure talent, my son was nice, nice, like. I miss that nigga. Now the nigga next to him is with the hoodie on. That's my man Trouble Rider. I mean, it's a funny, funny nigga, a troublemaker ass nigga. Yeah. And once again, man, you see, only nigga I let be standing behind me is niggas I trust, man. My man Two Gun Just, man. You know the shit. That was my boy for real. Every nigga in this picture, every nigga I took a picture with, I would have left with. Like, niggas ain't taking pictures with you unless they leave with you. Niggas don't do groupie cameos in prison because in prison, everything is guilty by association. Like, you have a nigga, you can't have no bozo whack nigga running around with your picture, floating, passing your picture around, especially if you some big homie nigga. 
Niggas ain't gonna, niggas not stamping you. Niggas is not letting you go around name dropping them with, and using their picture as them say solidification. Like, so you gonna see like throughout these pictures like this shit we going across right now is a festival in Auburn. You see the hurt right here was Aviator. A couple other the homies we seen in the past pictures as we scrolling through, but this nigga right here that's the Sean boy. I used to call him my brother. We fake. They used to make me look alike. They say all light skinned niggas look alike, but we don't really look alike at all. You know how these niggas be talking. But that's my son, man. In this picture right here, you see Pimp, Rashawn, Ghost, Homo. Homo's a nigga that niggas don't speak on a lot. Ghost a nigga niggas don't speak on a lot. My man Ghost next to me here again right here. This picture right here was my son Buck 50. He the reason I did two years in Clint. Punk ass. Motherfucker. Wow, this is a hound right here. Me and my son Jux again, man. Back to back. You know the vibes? It's my dog. That's my Scooby. If you know, you know, like. This is the little her official shine, his little shorty. See, like when niggas leave, they pass you flex and shit. This is me, the her, two of the herks and shit. Me and my son Paper, my son Jappy, Free Jappy, man, Free Jap Sean. That's the nigga that nigga say I really look like. My son Jap, we get confused all the time. Niggas would call me, yo, Jap, yo, Jazz, oh, yo. all the time niggas would do that shit. Uh, that's my son, and it's crazy. We both came, we met in jail, both came home. When I went back on my violation, that nigga went back on a new charge, man. Wow, uh, shit crazy. My son locked up right now. Free that, free the Herc Jap, man. He be home soon, man. Papers, I don't know what happens to the Herc Papers, man. He reached out to me a couple times. He's supposed to come link me, and I ain't heard from that nigga since, man. You know how that shit go with him. Say a love. I miss my niggas. Yeah, yeah, my head's me, my son, papers, and my man in the middle been flocking. What's up, Herc? Young Herc, y'all ain't gonna lie. He was the baby, you heard? Like, he was younger than the rest of them, but he's bigger than the rest of them. Hairier than the rest of them. And be beat this shit out the rest of them. That shit used to be so funny. Like, every time the Herc got into one of the other Hercs or one of the homies, that nigga was putting balls on shit. Niggas, what? They didn't want no 31 woo with the Hercs. I'm telling you. And matter of fact, I remember right here in this spot, this nigga papers wound up going to the box after for slamming the nigga on his head. Like, gangster. Give me this picture right here. Another one of the older dudes that, you know, Left a mark on me during my bed, Mr. 400, you know the shit. Little tummy tuck action all the time and shit. Well, yo, this next lick by Hero. Boy, this was my first up north visit, me and my moms. This picture right here, me, Ben Flock, and live, skinny me. This is me skinny and shit. Shit, I be having different weight changes. You see in some of the pictures, I look chubby. Some of them I look mad pale. You know what I'm saying? Shit is crazy. It's my man Ghost. Right? I mean, when me and Ghost first met, we didn't get along. Two cocky niggas used to run and shit. After that, though, it was just two niggas running shit together di diabolically. You go your boy Grams, my man Grip. Shit so loud. Both angles. You know, regular shit. I had a 12, the snakeskin 12s on in this one. I was flexing, I ain't gonna front. When them just came out, I kicked off those. I was, I was feeling like the man, you heard? See, one thing about prison, though, a picture tell you a lot. Because you could tell how a nigga was living. You see how niggas allow niggas to position certain pictures. Like, you could just tell a lot, man. A, pit, a picture's worth a thousand words. Like, niggas could say they had, did, what, whatever. You see multiple visits, multiple visits. Like, I didn't even start posting no real visit pictures. This one's just the gangsters that I met across my journey. You heard, like, a lot of them that I actually met in jail that exchanged me town pictures of them in jail as loyal, you know what I'm saying? Tokens of exchange to niggas that I done linked back in the street with. Same niggas, like, 
Mario is my son T B, it's the villains, it's the Stonies Littles. You know what I'm saying? You got I mean, niggas was just talking about I mean, here we go, like, you know the vibes. That's a nigga that I'm always gonna say is a OG, a big bro. Why? Cause he never lost his bop. That nigga still preach and lives accordingly. Damn, my man T, money bags. I ain't seen my son since we came home. My son Glock. The hoodies was out there. This is when, you know what I'm saying? The hoodies was hoodied up. Everything clean pop. Ah, you know this shit. Black old Maco. I ain't never crossed his path and shit, but you know, one of the homies passed this picture to me along the way. And I said, you know what? Fuck it. At least I know what the nigga look like. Yo, it's the only picture right there that I never crossed this path. Everybody else I've been with. That's the 400. Again, you know what I'm saying? On this Chico the Ball shit. That's my guy. <laughs> Mr. Ford on this Chico the Ball shit. This picture right here, you got niggas that don't get mentioned. Niggas that did it, left a mark on this Herc shit. Mad B. Stretch like. These are niggas that don't get mentioned. Y'all like, who's that? Right, tune in, because niggas is still stuck in the 90s. Now we got to get to the 2000s. That's my man, Whip. Nigga ghost again. Yo, this is, next pitch is my man, YB. This is a funny nigga. Now this nigga, I got a funny ass story that I'm going to do a whole story on about this nigga on one day. It's my man. Well, it's another little Herc Mac, man. Yo, Mac, I know you out here, nigga. Reach out, nigga. Fuck you at, nigga. Pop out. Iced out. Well, this is my man Shots, young boy hurt. That nigga's bopping, man. My son sent me the pictures of him in Vegas. You feel me? Me. Big villain, me and Ghost, I'm saying. Jig again, his little niece. Like I said, man, when niggas exchange pictures, there's a lot of writing on the back. Every picture means something. Niggas just don't, you don't get a picture from a nigga. You ain't gonna get a picture of a nigga unless he gave it to you. Or there's a reason you got it from a nigga that he gave it to. Like, you feel me? Well, like. But I hope y'all enjoy part one of this picture game shit.